Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Filius and as you may already notice I'm not a native English speaker. It's not my first language, it's not my native tongue. I apologize for all mistakes, grammar, vocabulary, idioms and so on. I will do for sure. Um, I know you will correct me. You're welcome to correct me. Please don't count on me to read every correction. I try to improve myself. So that said, let's already start. The first clip I choose to comment to go for is a clip of ITV, the morning show Good Morning Britain, uh, in which um, the co-host uh, Piers Morgan is taking the lead in a debate against the pro-gun, pro-bro, <laughs> the pro, uh, uh, the, the positive towards gun activist um, Dan Roberts is trying to um, defend the Second Amendment of the gun-owning citizens of the United States against Piers Morgan um, fierce attacks <laughs> on guns. The reason why I choose to debate this first, to, to comment this first, is one, um, we have plenty of discussions of uh, the gun issue on the internet, and um, the most of them are very United States focused. So I will start a little series, series well, a, a couple of videos, let's say it this way, a couple of videos about this issue um, from a side from someone of Europe and with um, a more European focused uh, view. And the other side is we had a couple of incidents in the last years here in Europe. Uh, the last ones um, just weeks uh, um, behind us in which uh, my country in which I live uh, was aimed not for the first time like often claimed but um, was also aimed and this is why it's for me quite uh, actual um, so I want to go for this the, the very third reason I go for this is that Orlando is um, an Islamic terrorist attack which is so fucking used by I'm sorry for the language is so used by social justice warriors by um, gun control advocates by um, many other people and they don't care at all for the victims you know, they don't care at all for the perpetrator for what, for what he did why he did they don't care with what he did and that really bother me and that's why I go for this so let's start What is your reaction to what happened in Orlando? Well, my initial reaction this morning when I first became aware of it was um, horror, obviously. Uh, but I'm more, uh, at this point, uh, place blame on the Obama administration uh, for failing to call this what it is, which is Islamic terrorism. Uh, and also, Unfortunately, my friend, with uh, people like yourself that continue to make up these ridiculous claims about the powerful AR-15. Okay. So here we go. The first question is about the reaction about what happened in Orlando. Um, Piers Morgan refused to say, what are you f your feelings about another Islamic terrorist attack? You, you know from the beginning, because also who the guest is, what he stands for, um, where this will go. So it's it's quite, um, yeah, um, hypocrite to uh, go for a question like that. What was your first reaction? Why don't you go just in media's race and and talk about? Do don't you think you have to forbid guns after this incident? Just just go for it. Um, you really don't care for the people at all. You, you are not interested in the victims. You are not interested in um, the terrorist itself. Um, all that is not necessary for you to talk about. All you want to talk about is the tool with what he killed. He first, his first reaction is to blame 
um, Obama and his government for not calling it what it is. It is a terrorist attack. It is a, an Islamic terrorist attack. The guy who, who committed the crime um, telephoned the police and told them he is doing what now is coming for a reason. He has won um, loyalty to ISIS in, in Iraq. And ISIS is there to say, hey, it's one of ours. So everything is pointing toward an Islamic terrorist attack. That beside the second point is Western journalism who always say we have to be more focused on details, we have to um, see the full story, give a shit on details in this case. Um, Piers Morgan as well as other journalists go in for the AR-15, that is why Dan Roberts is selling it. For those not familiar with uh, what an AR-15 is, um, it is a certain rifle and a type of rifle which is the most sold rifle in the United States and also parts of the Western world, big parts of the Western world, see these rifles in their military, in their um, um, civil hands in sport and hunt industry. But when it comes to military, it is a different step and I will go for that later because that is what now following instead of saying okay you say it has nothing to do with AR-15 like a good journalist would ask um, after he is blamed for going for the AR-15. Piers Morgan immediately go for a rant. He really go nuts on um, details of the AR-15 and the point is in Orlando there wasn't any AR-15 involved. Well, 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 hang on, hang on. Let me just ask you, what, what do you mean? How many bullets, just for those who know nothing about guns, the AR-15 sure. is, AR is a semi-automatic assault rifle. You and I would agree with that description, right? No, we would agree it's a semi-automatic rifle. Even the Department of Defense does not define it okay. as an assault rifle. Okay. Um, just to make it clear, a short cut on this point. Um, you may notice that Piers Morgan made up with, for those of you who are not familiar with guns or who know nothing about guns, and then he used the wrong term. Uh, just to point it out, he showed arrogance by trying to explain other people who don't know anything about guns about guns and showed he don't know the briefest, the, 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 the most fundamental stuff about guns. Okay, so let's call it a semi-automatic rifle. How many bullets is the AR-15 capable of firing in one minute? So, um, like I said before, uh, Piers Morgan is sticking to the AR-15 here, which is wrong. There were not any... AR-15 rifle used in Orlando. Um, I bring up a link for this. Um, in fact, it's not really of interest which gun is used, but they he decided to make a thing out of it because he wanted to point out that the most sold gun in the United States um, is responsible, which is pure nonsense. Responsible is the perpetrator behind the gun. But um, he wanted to point out this gun is responsible, you have to be careful and um, look how many bullets the gun can shoot in a, in a minute. Every single shot is a deadly threat to everyone, which is the next nonsense he is um, telling the people. Because one, between the uh, maximum um, output of a gun, between the amount of shots a gun could, in theory, do and the, the shooting it is actually possible with a gun in reality, there's a big difference. And for first time you have to divide between semi-automatic and automatic, which Piers Morgan already failed to do, uh, as mentioned. Um, semi-automatic mean every time you squeeze the trigger you make one shot shoot, one shooting, one shot. Um, and automatic means as long as you hold the, the trigger squeezed, you will continue shooting until the magazine is empty or the belt is empty if you have a belt fed um, 
weapon in your hand. So um, if a gun is theoretically able to shoot 600 rounds um, in a minute, you need a, <laughs> a, a very big magazine, you need um, something to um, rest your gun on because the recoil will bring you out of target um, and even if you rest it anywhere it will be hardly done that you will stay and I'm uh, anyway, I don't want to go too deep in this. Um, he mix up. He ha show he has no clue about what the, the issue he is talking about, and um, this will go on. How many bullets can sure. the AR-15 that was used in this latest attack and was used at Sandy Hook and Aurora and most of the mass shootings in recent history? Mm -hmm. And here, the host of the show is showing that he is either uninformed. Or that he is lying. He claims that most of the shootings in recent history have seen AR-15s as weapon of the choice, but that's not true. In fact, yeah, Aurora and um, the other um, Sandy Hooks were, were shootings where the uh, perpetrators used AR-15 clones. That's absolutely correct, not to deny, but it's also true that nearly, um, I think it was 70%, I bring up a statistic for this, um, of the shootings we are done with handguns, at least not with guns who fall under the term of um, assault weapons, which is an incredible dump term. So here we go again with an uninformed man who think because he's a famous man, he's a VIP, he's a media guy, um, can teach others, but in fact has no clue itself. Hey, Dan, you know, you're not... Sorry, you're, sorry, can I, sorry, sorry, sorry I'm not, I, I can't let this go. I'm sorry, Susanna. You're genuinely trying to tell us that in a country where 32,000 people a year are killed by guns, that eating candy is more dangerous. Um, these are two um, arguments following a part I cut out. You can see it on the original clip. Um, Piers Morgan is arguing with Kinder Schokolade, Überraschungseier, which is quite a distraction. It's not really a true argument because like Dan Roberts says, the laws exist in the United States to um, protect children from um, suff suffocate to death because of small objects stuck in their throat. And if you have a closer look to uh, Germany and the European Union, you will find quite the exact thing on uh, baby toys where uh, you are not allowed anymore to buy um, certain things because so many children died. Um, it's it's uh, not wise to buy teddy bears not with glass eyes um, or made of plastic because um, children chew them off and suck them down, uh, swallow them down, sorry, and um, just die. They can't breathe because of these things um, stuck in their throat and they can't breathe anymore. So um, I cut this out and um, Dan Roberts just tried to say this. He answered this argument and um, the reaction you see, these double face palm and these um, high emotional um, hosts, um, that is the direct reaction because of um, this explanation. Um, and Ben Roberts already did not mention that Kinder Schokolade is made to to be bought by children or for children, and so it's directly in the hand and around of children. While it's a different case with guns, so let I cut this out. It's a distraction. I spent now already, um, I guess two minutes already. Um, so. We jump over it. Um, the other argument in here is um, that 32,000 people die by guns in the United States. It's often mentioned, it's often said, and it's just not true. It's not the case. First of all, not 
buy guns. They die because people or themselves kill them with guns. It's just quite the same thing like people who kill other or, or harm other people with blunt objects. If you want to kill someone, take a knife, take a hammer and go for it and you know what you're doing, you will kill or um, significantly hurt this person you are aiming for and um, nobody would say um, these people died by a hammer or by a knife. Um, they would say someone killed them with and it's the exact same thing with guns. So um, the other point is uh, the number. Dan Roberts will point this out in his answer. You can see on the original clip again. Um, this number includes suicides and like Korea uh, as well as uh, Japan show, like Estonia show, like Russia show, like many other countries show. Um, if you have a social problem, if you have people in your society, in your communities, who are going to kill themselves because of depression, because of mental health issues, because because of um, economic reasons, and so on, um, they will find a way, and it is not to blame the gun for this. Can I just interrupt? Dan, can I interrupt? Because you know we are sure. talking about an event on Saturday night, in which fifty people were killed because a man yes. went into a gay nightclub and had two guns and was able to murder them. Now, whatever his motivation, oh. and there's a distinction to be made here between motivation and the means, mm. OK? And we can discuss his motivation, whether it was mental health, whether it was a perverse interpretation of his religion, whatever it was, whether he had some issue with, with gay men kissing. All of that is right. horrifying and will be discussed. But the fact of the matter is, he had two guns. Now, there are people over here who saw that happen in Dunblane, and they completely got behind the fact that if you take away the means, you restrict the number of people who are murdered by guns. And why is that not a compelling enough argument for the United States? So now, for the first time, Susan Reed, the host of the show, not the co-host, like I said before, um, speak out for the first time. Um, she's the host, which you would not think of uh, if you have seen the rest of the clip, because um, her co-host, Morgan Pierce, um, did not let her come to, to speak a lot. But now she, she is stepping forward and she did it with body language of talking to a dumb child. Watch like how she she is bringing her body forward, um, how she pronounces every word she is saying, how slow she speaks, how clearly she wants to make a point, how easy she tried to to bring it, um, the, to the, her opponent. Um, this is not good style. This is um, yeah, kind of patronizing if you want to say so. Um, so, but but what she is saying is is even more troubling. It is a, a very heavy point in the discussions anyway. Um, but before she comes to this, she go for the motivation of the incident of the perpetrator, and she's saying we don't discuss it now, which is a, like a shock to me because um, before you talk about the tools someone is using. You talk about the people who are killing, don't you? Um, if you talk about the bombings in London, which she seems not to remember at all, uh, 2005 in July, um, killing over 50 people, not with guns, but with bombs, um, then you don't go for, oh, wow, look, we have to uh, f bring new laws to, to avoid new bombs, because they are forbidden and the laws don't in fact criminals and terrorists that's like i said before the whole point of this discussion um, anyway she um, 
spring that they don't want to talk about the motivation. And while she's saying that, she already makes an execution for Islam, for the religion behind it. Um, the perpetrator, if you don't know it, um, had called the police before he started his killing spree and um, told them he um, swear loyalty to ISIS and the leaders of um, ISIS, of the Islamic State, um, and that he is doing what he's doing for his faith, for Islam, for the Sharia. He targeted this because gays are in the most religious sinners and the Islam ask those people to be killed. You can see this um, in uh, Iran where gays are hanged. You can see this in Iraq where now ISIS in, uh, is ruling the con part of the country and is uh, throwing them down of buildings. You can see it um, in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Um, they are stoned to death. Uh, and so on. You, it's it's quite clearly even in Indonesia, one of the most moderate countries, um, they tried to um, kill the career of one of their leading uh, politicians by claiming he's gay, and he had to prove that he is not gay, which is insane to me. So by by stepping forward and saying a perverted um, interpretation of a religion which saw nothing else than she has the right and the knowledge to uh, define which interpretation of a religion, in this case of Islam, is the right and which is the wrong. Anyway, I don't have um, the time to discuss this more in depth now um, and go to the second point. The second point is she mentioned Don Plain as... Um, point of change. Of, uh, in 1996, if you don't know, a single perpetrator entered um, an elementary school, if I remember right, or a kindergarten. The children were in the age of five and six years old, and he killed a whole class, uh, 16 children and their teacher. And it is, uh, how to describe such a crime, uh, heartbreaking. Yeah, especially if you don't just read the names but look for the pictures of these beautiful children. They were killed and um, the guy used um, an absolutely legal purchased gun to do so and after that in 1997 um, the United Kingdom, especially England, banned nearly all guns. So she say uh, Don Blaine was the change point and why um, the United States don't take an example um, and look at this. We had a school shooting and after that we banned guns and now we have it better. Which is not true, which is a big, big lie. A false argument. You can't point name it any better. Um, in 2010, in the United Kingdom, in Scotland, there was another mass shooting in Cumbria. In 1997, the guns were banned, and 13 years later, there was a mass shooting. Um, in this July, after the discussion, we have to admit, um, there was another mass shooting, um, if you like the rules, with three dead, uh, dead people. Um, so, you did not stop it. You, you did not stop it. Before um, the Dunplain massacre, you had the Hungerford massacre in 1987, when a single guy um, strolled a village where he lived with his mother, um, and he killed a couple of people, including police officers. Because in in the UK, in, in UK, police officers aren't armed. They have armed officers, but these armed officers have to be licensed and they are um, extraordinary rare. You, you have to call for them and um, a high-ranking officer have to agree and send them. In 1987, um, they had to um, flew one in. They needed a helicopter. A chop, chopper? Is, is, is this the right term? I don't, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, they brought him in 
through the air. And after uh, the perpetrator realized, ah, now I face resistance, he barricaded himself in an empty school and finally committed suicide, which is quite the same with the most perpetrators of this kind. When they face um, resistance, they stop their killing spree, they barricade and they fight. Most time they don't fight, most time they commit suicide which is a personal opinion. I, I'm not too sure if it's really the most time. But in the end, um, they are not able or willing to um, killing more innocent people in, in, in regular, on regular base. Um, anyway, she said, don't play at the change point. Now we understand better and Britain don't. You have had mass murderings in, in the UK. You had single horrific incidents um, like um, the killing of Lee Rigby, a soldier who was killed near his um, basement, uh, near his base, his, not basement, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, who was killed and decapitated on the open street near his um, base. Um, you had the Cumbria shooting and so on. It's not true to say our gun ban works. Just let us make a short reality check. Um, when the UK banned the guns in 1997, after the, the mentioned Dunplane massacre, um, they had an astonishing rise of crimes, especially of homicides, especially of gun um, violence, to say so. Um, I'm showing up um, a site from the BBC News of 2008 and there you can see there's a spike, um, an all-time high on uh, recorded crimes involving firearms other than air weapons, which by the way Scotland banned as well now. And you can see clearly uh, that the number is rising and rising, it jumps up um, till the year 2005-2006 and then stopped r rising, stopped becoming more and more. But um, if you try to jump on this train and now say, yeah, look, we had 10 years of um, evolving um, gun crimes, but um, this is quite logic because we banned guns and now we have another law, another crime committed with guns just by possessing some of them, um, you're not right. This this um, tablet d doesn't show um, possession of firearms, it shows gun crimes, it shows robbery, um, abduction especially, it shows homicides and um, assaults. And if you try to say, yeah, but after 10 years it became better, yeah, slightly. <laughs> yeah, the number dropped the numbers dropped slightly, but now they are on the rise again. Like um, The Guardian, for example, and many other newspapers reported um, in 2015 um, the number of homicides, of rapes and of knife fights, knife attacks, uh, knife murder homicides um, was on the rise again up to 11%. That's not the 18% high. Um, like um, shortly after the, the the gun ban, but it's quite an astonishing number, don't you think? And if you you have this in mind, you you really can't agree with Piers Morgan and Susan Reed, who say we have banned the guns and we made the situation better in the UK. So beside these incidents, if you're honest and go and look for crime at all, crime rates, homicide rates, and crime, uh, gun-related crimes, gun-related homicides, you see some development starting before Dunplane, starting before um, the, the gun ban stepped in. So enough of the war on numbers, war on statistics for now. Um, I know you can trust or distrust statistics but I can I think you can see that the trend that the pure claim that we ban guns and the crime went down is not true. They can't made more homicides. 
they just can try to to bring less homicides on the table and in this case they i think they tried for for a short time in the recent years that's why they had these um, strange drops in crime rates recently and even um, the uh, journalists started to wonder why they had an all-time low um, well not all journalists wondered um, Piers Morgan and Susan Reed in this um, Good Morning Britain show um, I think I pointed it out um, they have no clue about what they are talking at all what they pretend to do to have uh, while Piers Morgan pretends to have a clue about guns at all um, Susan Reed pretends to have an overview, uh, a good look on um, British or UK development and what is going on on the United States. I hope I made it clear both um, either, uh, 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 how to say it polite, um, both either have no clue or they are lying. And I think both is possible. Um, if you believe on the statistics or not, you can see this, that uh, the British island is no uh, peaceful wonderland where nothing happens and that killing is not occurring and that mass murderers have no chance. They have a chance, they do it on the British island as well as in the United States and this will never change by no law. You can minimize it by a good society, by good society changes, but I don't see um, this development in Europe or in the United States at all. I think it's become worse, but this is stuff for another video. So I hope you enjoyed your stay. I hope you found enough to um, have own in new own informations or if you want to research to check what I said. Um, I give a lot of links below to go for the sources I used. Um, if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments below. I hope you had a good time here. I appreciate if you give me a thumb up or even f try to follow me. I will try to add new content on a regular base. And of course, I'll try to improve myself. I apologize again for my pronunciation and for all mistakes I made. So perhaps um, we hear, or you hear me, or we discuss in the near future again. I would really enjoy that. Have a good time. To the next time. Bye.